Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today, I'd like to introduce someone that's been very proactive within the UFO community, and she's the sister-in-law to well-known book author and ufologist, Preston Dennett. Her name is Christine Kisara Dennett. Christine has illustrated over a thousand images for various clients. Her artwork has contributed to movies, television, books, and lectures within the UFO and paranormal community. She was a semi-finalist in the L. Ron Hubbard Illustrators of the Future and was voted Best UFO Artist in 1996. Originally an art teacher, she now works closely with many eyewitnesses and prominent authors to accurately portray unusual experiences. She utilized psychic channeling techniques to bring forth artistic renderings for her clients through meditation. And she currently resides in Oregon with her husband. So thank you for coming on, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, like you've been active for a, a long time. So when did you start, uh, like you're an, you're an artist. So when did you start doing drawings and all that? Um, I started um, drawing when I was three. My mother's an art teacher and she's the one that got me learning how to do artwork. And uh, I just drew every single day. I still do. Uh, very passionate about it and it's part of me just like breathing <laughs> so uh, I guess this is sort of like a chicken and the egg thing did the your experiences provoke the or bring about your like your your passion for drawing or was you know the, the your your love for drawing already there uh, my love for drawing was already there just like a lot of things you know, some kids, they're born with stuff, you know, they come into the world with their fists clenched and they bring in things with them. And I, I'm thoroughly convinced I came into this world with something. And one of it was doing artwork, um, basically. Okay. <laughs> um, at outside world, I don't know if it influenced me to do art, but internally, yeah, it was just a part of me. Um, so, okay, let's talk about some of your experiences. When did all of your stuff happen? Did you, did it start off? Uh, I know it, I know the answer, but at what age did your experiences start? Um, you know, a lot of contactees told me that I probably had experiences when I was a child and I just don't remember. Um, I've had a couple of, of, uh, uh, hypnosis sessions, but I'm kind of skeptical of those also. And my full on, full conscious ex memory of having an experience was in my bedroom when I was about between seven and nine years old. Don't exactly remember when I was young. In my bed at night, I used to always wake up around 4.33 at night um, or early morning. And uh, for no reason at all, I just wake up. Um, this one time when I woke up, I saw something at the foot of my bed and they were these little dwarf like people. And uh, my bed was like a little girl's bed. So it probably stood about, I don't know, about three feet maybe off of the ground. It was on a, you know, a, a structure. And I saw them at my feet and they were putting these long glowing rods on my feet. And they looked at me and they basically telepathically told me to go back to sleep. They were taking my memories. And that, bang, I was asleep. <laughs> wow. did, uh, this you, uh, did you find out what those rods were? No, I just, I wasn't afraid. Um, it seemed, I mean, when I had the experience, it seemed normal. So maybe they did a lot. I don't know. Um, I still, to this day, don't know why they were doing that. Uh, did you get the, uh, a good head count? Yes, there was three of them. There were three dwarves there um, visually. 
and they came every single night at that time um, for two weeks. Oh. And uh, I know my sister saw them, but she doesn't remember. Um, we shared a room for 20 years. So. And what uh, state did this, did this happen in? In California. In Cali, okay. Yeah, hmm. Woodland Hills. Now, I know uh, you had uh, like a missing time when you were around the age of two, two and a half, I think. Or you, 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 would, um, you disappeared, yeah. Yeah, I was a baby and I still had my diapers on and I started walking early. I was um, nine, I forget. My mom said I walked early and we used to go walking all the time and I decided to go walking, uh, my mom said. And uh, it was in Utah, Salt Lake City. Uh, apparently there was a big, huge highway that I had to cross uh, at a playground where they found me. It took them all day to find me. She called the police. And I was in my diapers swinging on the swing, <laughs> you know, and um, apparently I was missing for uh, probably six hours and I was fine. Yeah, no abuse, nothing. No. Have you been to that playground before? Um, I think that my mother used to take us there. Okay. We had two little dachshunds and she used to get, take us for walks over to that playground. So yeah, I probably was there before. I probably walked over uh, there. But I find it somebody... strange that you would have had the ability at that age to cross the street, travel there by yourself, being at a young age and you know everything's big and huge and and you know how it is when you're a kid everything's like yeah. super tall and, <laughs> that you're There's able to get day. yeah well how did you get there on your own uh -huh. that, i find it strange <laughs> that you you might have been taken or something's a bit weird i know <laughs> yeah. and i wasn't hurt or anything i was quite happy so who knows and i tried to do the regression for that and nothing uh, so, Christine, uh, you've had this sort of strange experience happen to you when you're in kindergarten. Can you get into that? Yeah, I, every day we would take naps in this room that was like a big gymnasium. And it was dark. I didn't like it at all. Um, I would lie down and we would be sleeping for a little while. And then this man would come in. And he looked kind of like a janitor. Um, he wore a beige khaki overalls. Um, he looked kind of like Santa Claus with a jovial face and rounded nose and really blue sparkly eyes and a nice smile. And, you know, he seemed like a nice fellow. And he took me away. And after that, I don't remember anything. The only memory I have or when I have recall is I feel um, this feeling in my body. And uh, I asked psychics about it. I asked, um, I, I did some uh, hypnosis and nothing. Nobody picked up anything. I wanted to know if he was a somebody, a molester, or if he was a, where did he come from? Who was he, you know? Um, after a while, I started making myself sick, so I didn't have to go to school and have to, you know, go take a nap and go out with this guy. So it's still a mystery to me. I never had any injuries or anything as a result of it. I just had this weird physical feeling. <laughs> mm. Now, I suspect you were with other children on the floor taking a nap. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't was there somebody to watch over you? That's, I, I would assume there would be. So well, I don't know. I, all I know is that it was happening and I didn't like going to school because of it. I was in kindergarten, um, Utah. I was the only little brown haired uh, mixed race child there. And uh, so 
a lot of segregation happened there too. Um, oh. It was a Mormon school. Yeah. But I thought I was special, you know, yeah, they'd so. put me aside and do what I wanted. So I was in my mind, I thought I was special. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really think about it until later and going, Hey, <laughs> why me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it didn't, I didn't mind it at all. It didn't bother me. I find it obvious, like weird that he could have been like, like ET related, but you, you just can't come in, grab a kid and, and get out without like being watched or seen or, or yeah, if I would have been a, like, a, even a, if I was a teacher and I'd be watching kids and I'd, I'd see the gender come in, grab a kid, I'd say, Hey, you know, something's off here. See that that's really, that's really a good observation because um, only an extraterrestrial could pull that off. You know, after knowing, hearing all these other stories and stuff, they have the capability of just putting people into a psychic sleep, doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And, but, you know, I was so young, I had no idea. Yeah. So, yeah, we talked about your bloodlines a bit. Let's get into that. You've got a, a, a whopper of a, of a, a mixture <laughs> of bloodlines in you. So. Oh, yeah. My dad. He's uh, Filipino and Spanish and Chinese. My mother is German, English, Cherokee, and uh, Scottish. So, right. yeah, I have a mixture. So that makes my grandson the whole, has the whole world in him, pretty much. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So your your father was what, raised in Hawaii, I think. Uh huh. He was Hawaiian. Um, he grew up on in Hilo, Hilo, and went to Hilo High. He became a mechanical engineer. He was very, um, very interesting man. Uh, very sensitive man. Um, my ancestors on his mother's side were Spanish, and they were just. Uh, the black sheep of the family because they were gypsies and before they were gypsies they were pirates and so nobody wanted to talk about them but mm. when I was little I used to dream about them and they were vivid lucid dreams and I know that they were around me the spirit of them so <laughs> it so, was pretty intense. wow that's that's cool yeah, so, they they would even go into my husband's dreams and my children's dreams. Uh, they were very, very interesting beings. <laughs> so, do you think they were actually uh, actual spirits? Trying yeah. To okay. They were definitely spirits. They um, they were up to no good, and oh. I used to tell them to go away leave my family alone and leave me alone um i used to dream about them every single uh night when i was just at a certain age um he would come in as a pirate and sit in a room with no windows and just sit there and smile at me hmm. it's my grandfather my great grandfather <laughs> i don't remember his name but okay wow. yeah he was he was naughty <laughs> I like that. I like that. My, uh, my mother, um, well, she's, I guess she's an experiencer to an extent. Um, she's like, she was into angels and angels and crystals and, and stuff like that. But one dream that really like shocked me when she was a kid was, uh, that, well, that she told me on later was what, uh, her dad smoked, you know, you know, back in the day, they started to smoke at the age of 10, let's say. And so he yeah. smoked all, you know, all his life and he died around the age of 40 of lung cancer. And, um, uh, so she's from a family of seven. And when she was a kid, she, she dreamt she, that, okay, she like, let's say she was out of body, let's say, and she would leave her bedroom into the kitchen and she would see her father in a rocking chair, rock. And she, you know, he, he would smile at her. That's it. And she asked him, like, are you okay up there? Are you in pain? And all he did was smile. And not too long after that, she'd wake up. But instead of being under the covers, She's on top of the bed, on top of the, on top of the sheets. She's looking at the ceiling directly at 
the the you know the, remember we had um you know these light bulbs with these sort of metallic cords that we had to pull to to to, to get yeah. the light on um, uh -huh. well back in the 70s at least we had that and uh no, that, that tells you my age so um so Are but you? she was yeah. she, she was looking at the, the light bulb that was on she went to bed the light was off under the covers now she's on top of the bed kneeling looking at the light bulb and that's how she woke up whoa and then, she, and then, and then prior to that she saw her father in the <laughs> kitchen imagine that that's wow that sounds similar to what i was going through it was similar i don't remember waking up in different positions but i distinctly remember him he was very very there and they were all my father was very uh he used to tell me he was afraid of them oh. my auntie read tarot cards and stuff and he said she was a witch and uh he didn't like her too much the family didn't like them <laughs> So now I'm just trying to getting a you know a bigger picture of why you've get you're getting these uh you've got these, yeah. this talent to help and uh, you know you went through these uh, adventures and stuff. Uh, oh, um, okay. So uh, so you started doing drawings all your life. Then you started drawing, uh, creating drawings of what I say like were future events. Yes, I drew my husband. Um, I also drew a picture of. The woman that I worked for before I met my husband, she was very, she was very important in my life because she, I believe in omens or synchronicity. She was a synchronistic part of my life before I met my husband, which I'm still with um, for over 45 years. And um she was special because she told me that she would have dreams of standing in front of people with a huge golden book and she wore a golden robe. She was this beautiful woman with blonde hair and she would be teaching them. And I'm like, wow, she's amazing. And the whole time I worked with her, I had no idea that she wore bifocals. The last day when she had to let me go, I was a, an accountant and I was horrible at it. <laughs> they had to let me go, fire me, because I kept making mistakes. She was wearing bifocals. And I said, I didn't know you wore bifocals. And she said, yeah. And I said, I, the whole time I've seen you, you've never worn them. And she says, oh, I don't need to see, I know. So she was something else. And after they fired me, I met my husband and uh, he's had UFO experiences. So, um, so when you drew these uh, pictures, did you have a feeling that you'd be seeing these people down the road? No, I just drew them. I just draw people. I have bunches and bunches of drawings of people. I just it's like an impulse. I, I'm an impulsive drawer. And when I draw, sometimes I draw things that are going to happen. Sometimes I draw things that are there. Um, I just don't question. I just sit down oh. and draw. So it, it, sort of, it, it comes down and you, you just like let it flow onto the onto paper. Yeah. <laughs> wow. did, uh, yeah. did you draw your children too? Um, I did actually, I drew my son and my daughter, I'd have to find the pictures, but yeah, I keep a visual diary. Okay. I've been keeping it since I was um, in high school. Wow. Uh, that's, that's no, that's really cool though. Um, yeah, it is cool. <laughs> I like, I look at it and I remember drawing. I remember drawing every single drawing that I drew mm. and the feelings I had. It helps me with my memory because um, yeah. I have a weird short-term memory. I don't remember things. I'll go into another room and not know why I'm there. <laughs> so. <Okay. laughs> 
<laughs> uh, do you think do you uh, do you get the impression that your uh, husband's like your soulmate? Oh, I know he is. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of transfiguration. No. Um, it's really interesting. You look into a mirror, and you have a candle lit on the left hand side, and you just stare into the mirror at your face right on the third eye and you just let yourself relax and you can see past lives and stuff and we both saw his past life um of a uh, he was a soldier and i think that's where I, we were together before but uh yeah we're very bound to each other and we know each other very well. I'm sure I've had past lives with Preston also as a monk. He, he remembers a pirate. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But. Bloody pirate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Preston. Um, so, so yeah, let's talk about the fact that your, your husband got killed um, in, in, in one of his past lives. It was uh, that the one that happened at Mesa Verde? Uh, Mesa Verde. Yeah, yeah, Mesa Verde, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was running around Mesa Verde when we went there to visit. And the park ranger was watching him. He said, oh, I remember this place. I remember everything. I remember climbing up that one hill and falling off of that other hill, dying. And he remembered everything. And he started talking to the park ranger, asking him questions about... Um, was there some kind of dwelling over there and was there petroglyphs over here and the park ranger was saying yeah yeah how do you know and you know they don't let everybody go into mesa verdes in all the areas and and my husband marco he he knew so much and he remembered the past life when he went there so that was fascinating it really was because he makes petroglyphs he 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 carves in wood wow <laughs> now that's or amazing because you down. a lot of the times when you grow up you tend to forget your past life at least you know it when you up until the age of like two or something but you tend to forget about it but uh to have that recall is fascinating yeah i i've had um other accounts where other people have told me that when they go on vacation and they visit like um, Rome, um, they remember stuff. Uh, he remembered Mesa Verdes. And um, that's fascinating to me because I remember things when I go to the um, ancient trees in the forest. Um, what is it called? That big forest with the 2000 year old trees. Uh, I'll go inside a tree and I'll go, yeah, I've seen this tree before. It, it, I remember the tree. I remember the root system, just the whole thing mm -hmm. of being American Indian during that time, but more prehistoric, I think. So. Okay. Way back. Did you ever have any like uh, psychic encounters, ghostly stuff happen to you? Yeah. Um, when I uh, moved out of my house for the first time with a boyfriend, his brother passed away a while ago um, of a car accident. And my boyfriend was the one driving and he always held that close to his heart. He was felt so guilty about it. And so his brother's ghost would come would, he said he went into the closet and there's like this um, little area above the closet where you can open a little door and go in and store stuff. That's where he said his brother would be. And so I would go in there when nobody was around and talk to him. And uh, he showed me his brother would be with him when he would um, play music. He had two big speakers and then this hanging chair. I don't know if you remember the hanging chairs in the 70s that were made out of wicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, and the chair would swing all by itself to the music. 
and that was his brother. And uh, the interesting thing about that, and I'm going to go back to synchronicity, is that his brother looks like my husband that passed away. And in some way, I think his brother on a cosmic level connected my husband and I together. Oh, wow. That's lovely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so you started working with uh, researchers and uh, parapsychologists in 86. So what did you do with them? Um, the first person that I worked with was Preston. He was uh, open and um, he started um, researching other people. And uh, so he had me illustrate his books. Um, the most fascinating thing about it was when we went and started interviewing people in person. Uh, I would bring my sketchbook and I would just sit down with them and ask them what they saw, um, like a police sketch artist and uh, draw down their experiences and the beings that they saw. Um, what fascinated me the most was the feelings that I got from these people. It was like they were charged. The, something about them was so different from just the regular person that you would meet on the street. They were just charged with energy and uh, like drinking 10 cups of coffee, you know, they, I could feel my body buzzing when I would talk to them. They definitely had contact. Anybody with contact, you can feel it. Yeah, they're passionate. Oh. Earlier on, we spoke, you. You talked to me about uh, Preston's uh, like uh, like awakening, uh, how it happened. Can you get into that? Oh yeah, um, he was a skeptic, and uh, when his mom passed away, it was sudden. Nobody was expecting it. Um, it shifted him, and at the. Uh, at the celebration of her life, when everybody was gathering outside in Topanga, a car drove by and he saw his mother in the um, passenger seat of one car, looking at him and smiling. And that's what really got him. That's what put him on the journey to the paranormal and UFOs. He started the first people that he started interviewing was at work. He was working with a contactee that saw a lot of UFO activity. And after that, he, he just wrote books. And um, I went with him to UFO conferences to do interviews. I started meeting other researchers like Barbara Lamb and uh, uh, contactees um boy so much so many years you know just a lot of years and the paranormal uh i've had a lot of ghost experiences but um i didn't really illustrate much for people that saw ghosts later on i started um meditating on photographs and people would ask me to meditate on loved ones that had passed on and stuff like that so that was my association with the paranormal. But I've had paranormal experiences too. So I kind of know how to put the energy in there or connect in some way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, see, we, we live, this earth is amazing. It's not one dimension. It has many dimensions about it, many different um, layers. And if you're really sensitive, you can connect to those layers and kind of kind of go into that. I, as I'm getting older, it's not happening as much, but um, I know it's there. <laughs> yeah. I've had a lot of like, let's say contact from uh, around 2005 to 2016. And as soon as I, I guess I started talking openly about, you know, the subject, that's when it sort of died off a lot. Oh, so not, 
Yeah. So I'm not, yeah. Like they, 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 the first time I heard that, that as soon as you start speaking about this, they, it stops, but it really died off because, you know, things would happen roughly every, every month, every two months. And then as soon as I had like my open heart surgery and after that, uh-huh. like a few like major events, but after that, it, it died off. So. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's weird. I think it's still there. It's just that maybe we're just kind of focusing on the physical part of our life, which is just as important. That's why we're here. Mm. Have you ever had uh, out of body experiences? I have actually, (laughs) I didn't like them. (laughs) They were (laughs) too buzzy. It buzzed and Preston kept saying, Oh, we'll get past the buzz, get past it. But I, (laughs) I never got a chance to do that. I, I think in a way I'd rather lucid dream and go into out of of body from a lucid dream. But lately, you know, since I've been getting older again, um, I just go to sleep and wake up. (laughs) (laughs) There's nothing between. So (laughs) I don't know. Can you get into details regarding that buzz? Because I, I, I've lived through something similar and I want, just want to get your, your take on that. Yeah, it was after I read Robert Monroe's first book. I think if you want to have an outer body experience, read his book. Mm. I did the gateway course. The first oh, you one. did? I did. Oh, man. <laughs> That's intense. I, it, I felt myself buzzing like I was a vibration and it was low. It was like a brrr, like, um, like one of those vibrating beds, you know, okay. except my body. <laughs> and when I went through the wall, I'm sitting here, okay, I'm going through the wall. Um, and I was awake. I was not sleeping. Um, going through the wall, it just buzzed really hard. Like I was having a hard time getting through this dense thing, you know, and then it got out the wall and I went up into the sky and then I would lose consciousness. Yeah. But there was one time I, I would try to um, get past my backyard, but it didn't quite get so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it was freaking me out really bad. So I stopped doing it. Okay. <laughs> now, out of <laughs> fear? Were you afraid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was scary. I didn't like the feeling because I'm I'm uh clairsentient i'm i feel everything like i've put on my grandmother's wedding ring and i felt pain go up my arm and it started to crawl up my arm and i threw the ring off and i went mom i'm feeling pain off of this ring and she said oh yeah grandma had uh arthritis terminal arthritis <laughs> I'm, like, wow. I'm never put that ring on again so wow. i'm pretty sensitive See, yeah, I, I interviewed Angela Stats and her mother and herself were something like you. She would go to like an antique store and she would touch stuff and she would get these visions of stuff happen. And like she would see like the past and they compare notes. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, that you're amazing. Wow. Yeah, I, I do that, too. And I would go to the antique store. I'd sit down in this one chair and it was <laughs> something really bad happened to it and i tried to get everybody else to feel it you feel that and they were like uh no (laughs) you have to be kind of you know i i have to be careful okay (laughs) i i guess i need to adopt a different attitude towards the whole thing preston's always telling me to okay (laughs) okay that's no that's really cool i um, so regarding your, uh, all the work that you've been doing so far with the drawings, do you, do you get the impression that you've been like on a, a specific, like spiritual path or like that this was your life's mission? Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. See, I'm feeling something right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was a little girl, I was, uh, at my grandma's house. She taught me how to pray. And so when I, prayed at night for the first time by myself god came and it was this huge energy it came into the room through the window and it just 
filled the whole room up. I didn't see anything. I felt it. And I could hear the walls creaking. And I knew it was God because grandma taught me about it. And it said to me, or it didn't really say anything. It just gave me this knowledge that it would always be there. It wouldn't interfere with the decisions I made in my life. And it would never, ever judge me. And uh, that was a very clear message. And later on, because of my generation, everybody got went to church and stuff. Uh, the Bible didn't, didn't correlate with what I received from my experience. And it was very confusing for me. I didn't understand how anybody could think that God was vengeful. Because mm. this God that came to visit me, not at all. There was no judgment, nothing, no heart, no anger, no nothing. There was just pure love. Mm. Beautiful. I know. So I'm pretty sure that's connected. My, my service to people is connected to that. And it gets hard. It's not easy. <laughs> mm. It's not easy to serve people. No, I know. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, like I, I had my own experiences growing up too, but uh, I found out recently why, at least, you know, DNA wise, why I started having experiences, but also, uh, you know, a bit regarding your stuff. When I was a kid, my mom would like, we'd pray a bit before going to bed. And uh -huh. I would uh, say good night to all the my deceased relatives, because I had like an uncle that died, a uh, grandfather that died, and I would say like good night to everyone that that was alive too. So I'm wondering if I attracted something also during that time because uh, uh, I was cute when I was a kid. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, um, now yeah, I watched one of your renderings of a mantid on uh, on uh, YouTube. That was something. Uh, that was beautiful. Your artwork's amazing. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I need to put a link in the description box because that was amazing. Oh, good. Yeah, you can put it in your show if you want. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you would go about doing that, but sure, you can use it. Well, I, I could always put a link in the uh, the description box, but uh, yeah. Because I know you've did um, like renderings for uh, Pete Slattery and Misha too. And uh, oh. I was wondering who did those images because, you know, that was bloody amazing. Oh, and, uh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's I, good. Uh, okay. I enjoy it. Yeah. Sometimes I don't quite get it right. Um, I don't know why. It just happens. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> Let's get Just into some of the thing. let's get into some of the images you sent me, because um, you know they, they, some of the, some of the drawings are really nice, but uh, I think the, these stories have to get out too. Um, let's talk about the uh, the two ETs at school. Oh yes, uh, my sister in law. Yep. Uh, she she went to college with my my um, my actual sister before she was married to my husband and Preston's brother. And she was uh, working a sculpture class. And so she found a shopping cart at night on her block. So she was bringing it back home to do a sculpture project. It was really noisy because one of the tires was off. So it was making this clangy, clangy, clangy sound. And when she would walk down the um, block to her house, she had to go elementary school. So she's clinging along and her little puppy dog's following her. And all of a sudden she looks over, there's a spotlight um, on, at the elementary school and there's two kids standing there. It's at night and they're both looking at each other and they look like they were wearing masks. They had white heads, big, huge white heads with a little like jumpsuit, green jumpsuit on. And as she clanged by, they both moved in unison like, and they were floating off the ground 
and they both looked at her. And when she saw them looking at her and moving towards her, she knew they weren't children. She knew they were extraterrestrials. And um, they really <laughs> scared her and startled her because their eyes were so big and almond and they had this white, white skin. And so she clinged away really fast and <laughs> more like ran away with her dog and her dog saw them too. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So it's, it, it is life-changing. Was that her first experience? Um, oh, I don't know. She had another experience with my sister where they saw a man walking down the same road um, and he was phasing in and out of space like he was in sections and they both saw him doing this. So that that's another experience that I know that she had with my sister. Hmm. Kind of like a ghost. They said it was a ghost, but oh. I don't know. I've never heard that before of you where they phase in, a, yeah. in and out like in sections like that. The only ghost I saw was the, the ghost of a cat. I used to take care of the neighbor's cat at, during winter time because he, he didn't really give a shit. And it was freezing <laughs> cold outside. Now the guy was awful. And uh, uh, uh -huh. they went out of town for like a week and he was outside, no food and stuff. And uh, so I, I brought him uh -huh. in for like two weeks, but uh, I was like severely allergic and I, I started getting ill and I had to, you know, put him outside and uh, yeah. I, I never saw the cat after that. So I assumed he died. And what like, not like maybe a month or two later, um, I'm on my, my bed and uh, like, uh, I think I'm reading a book. So my, my, my legs are like, uh, like far off. And uh, I see these, uh, this sort of white light, white jolt of light, a dash of light spring from the, like the floor onto my bed, onto my, my lap and jolted down to my, you know, to my feet, and it disappeared. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> so I that's assume really it, yeah, it did, like, it, and it really reminded me of, like, a cat jumping on the bed and just running across to the, the, the bottom part of the bed. Oh, so, neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh. I see shadow kind of beings and light beings that are shadows, but opposite when it comes to ghosts. Yeah, I see those. So I what, don't see. What type of shadow beings did you see? Um, when I started, uh, when I became Buddhist, uh, that's when I saw the shadow man. And he would be to my left peripheral most of the time. But when I was driving and stuff, I'd see him. And my friend who became a Buddhist monk and uh, or had me ordained and stuff like that. And he was teaching me. He was worried about me, you know, being schizophrenic or something like mm -hmm. that. But um, I knew it was a shadow being. I I just had a feeling, and um, I would see it all the time around me, following me, about the same height as me, about five feet tall, and skinny and thin. Oh. But it never did anything physically to indicate that it was there. And finally. Uh, I decided to help it. I did some meditation and I asked it to come and sit with me and meditate. And then I visualized um, like rainbow light and all sorts of light going into it. And it went away and I never saw it again. I've had five in my bedroom. Uh, like, but you know, they weren't skinny. They were like had really hot broad shoulders and they, where there would be a neck, there weren't any neck. There was a huge round helmet on their head. Oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like extraterrestrial. Yeah. I thought it could have been like mantids. You know, uh, I've seen render renderings of mantids with wearing cloaks. So they're like really broad. Like a, they were, seemed to me like a, a, a big football player. You could only see the, you know, the, the, the shoulders down, like they were wearing, wearing a cloak, huge shoulders. And, uh, then they come to the neck and then they'd have like this really like out of proportion round helmet really. Um, oh, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. And just before that, I woke up, uh, this happened in December of 2013 and there was a, a black hole because my, 
my bed was right beside the doorway and I opened my mm -hmm. eyes and because, you know, it was cold and I, the cold make, tends to, helps me, uh, I guess I, it makes me go to the bathroom. And uh, <laughs> so I wake up a lot because of that. And mm -hmm. there was like this five inch black hole right in front of my face in the bedroom doorway. And oh, not wow. too long after that, that's when uh, my, my girlfriend wakes up think uh because i you know I, I i switched on the lights and she thought i thought she woke up because of me but a man was telling her in her mind emp electromagnetic pulse nonstop, and that woke her, woke her up at the same time i'm getting this black hole so uh -huh. we we fall asleep like half and maybe 30 minutes later and then i wake up to these shadow beings moving in front of the bed on and on her side of the bed because she's a, an abductee uh-huh and uh, I raise my arm to say hi. I'm super drugged up, like you know, waking up from a uh, like a, an operation. But I'm able to raise my hand, and as soon as I do that, I black out. I wake huh. up. I'm I realize I'm standing. I'm looking at my feet, so I'm, I'm looking downwards. My feet are, are bare feet, so I'm, I, I suspect I'm naked because I'm wearing hospital robes. Oh wow! So you remember your abduction. And, and then as soon as I, I see that, I black out and I wake up in bed the next morning. So. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you, you had recall. You had a recall. That's really good. Um, yeah, the contactee woman that I knew or hung out with, she, they could never put her down. Really? She was like determined to stay awake. She used to put out traps when she was young. <laughs> never <laughs> never worked <laughs> that's funny no 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 mom my mother she saw a door open up a big huge door open up in the middle of her bedroom yeah a out of yeah and she it terrified her she hid under her sheets after that she went <laughs> i said you should have went through she said, no no way uh, my mom's had UFO experience when she was 14, too. Oh, that's <laughs> a beam, so cool. Yeah, when a beam of light came through from her ceiling and followed her. Really? When she was being babysat. Yeah. She, she won't. She says, oh, it was nothing. I don't think it happened. And I said, yeah, it did. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. That's really awesome. Yeah. You have to get confirmation that you're not alone in your family to, to go through that. Yeah, my mom's very psychic. She's She always says, well, watch out, you know, with your tire. You might get a flat tire, and you do. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's like that kind of psychic, you know? Wow. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Canoga Park UFO. That was really wonderful. That was with a friend of mine who I used to be with. Um, she lives in Australia now. Um, she was a contactee. Uh, she's noticed a UFO flying above us where I lived in Canoga Park. And there were six people there, my neighbors and me, my husband, her and her son. And we all looked up and saw this um, kind of like arrow shaped UFO flying above us and it was transparent looking and um, it was really cool to have that many people watching it and she she always was very good at noticing if there was a UFO around she could feel it um, and we had watched it fly over us really slow for a little while and then it went away Mm. It wasn't that big of a deal, but what was a big deal was that everybody saw it. There were six people, and that's what you want. You want a lot of eyewitnesses. So how big was it? Did you get a good feeling? Um, from as far away as it was, I'd say it was as big as a, uh, a little bit bigger than a jet air, airplane, pretty much like those, those big, huge jets that house a million people a hundred people okay something that big maybe okay that's pretty big. Good at that but from how far it was yeah okay and we'd see ufos and stuff all the time with her i mean i out in topanga canyon 
where that's a big hot spot, we saw an airplane, just super loud little prop airplane flying along with a beam coming out the bottom of it. What? <laughs> it was like, okay, that's not really an airplane. I, they were just faking it, you know? <laughs> because it was so obvious they were faking it. They were making this huge noise of a, this little airplane and this huge bright beam of white light coming out the bottom of it. And, and uh, my husband and my friend were with me and they're both like, do you see that? That's not a plane, that's, that's a UFO. <laughs> and they're just trying to make it look like a plane, <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's so obvious to us, but it's not to them, which is funny. Yeah. Uh, are they are they doing it on purpose? Uh, I, I don't, don't know. know. As some of you know, you think about all the extraterrestrials. Some of them are more sophisticated than others. I've I've talked to this one woman who said that she was at a UFO convention, and this ET just came right through space and sat down and talked to her for a little while and then just left. And she was sitting on the side, you know, eating her lunch or something. And, and that happened to her during the UFO convention. So they can do whatever they want. They can put people in psychic sleep. They can open up space. They can phase in and out of reality or dimensions um the, it, it, there's a lot of stories of what they're capable of yeah they abduct <laughs> you they you know they bring you through the wall yeah um, i've heard so many stories about that i know i know people that that happened exactly that to their uh i think uh i know this lady that she told me that her daughter she saw her daughter move through the wall oh wow that must yeah. have been amazing yeah wow oh um let's see uh let's talk about the c seti flash that we talked about earlier um c seti would go out with a group of people um they would meditate to call down ufos and they would also use high-powered flashlights so in the meditation you visualize yourself where you are at that space we were at Topanga Canyon on top of this hill in the park. There was about 12 of us. I had my camera. I was running it, hoping there would be a UFO that came. We were there for uh, probably near midnight for about three hours. And as soon as my camera lost its battery, this huge star just appeared. It was brilliant, bright blue star right in front of me. It lit up the whole hill. Um, Preston, my brother-in-law was sitting in front of me. He didn't see the star. Everybody else's eyes were closed as they were meditating. And I'm like, going, oh my God, there's a UFO in Preston. <laughs> Preston uh, saw the light and the lit up hill and then it went away it just flashed gone oh. <laughs> it was so beautiful it i saw the points coming off of it. it was like these little rays of light coming off of it oh i used to do uh on my first ufo the, the second time i did a c5 i called in my first ufo third time i called in the same ufo a week later but one time we were just doing a C5 with my, my past, uh, my old fiance that we were, uh, yeah, she's an, uh, like an abductee. But we, we were seeing this huge light. Like it really looked like a star, but a bit bigger than the norm, but far off. And it, we were looking at it for like a good half an hour. And then I say to, to my fiance at the time, wouldn't that be weird if that was a UFO? And we were looking at it. And as soon as I say that, it's the light starts to dim, 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 and it starts to move off, you know, in oh a southerly my. direction. 
Wow. But we saw for like a good half an hour, but as soon as we said that, it starts moving. That was weird. That is weird. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had experiences like some other people did. Um, I mean, Preston, he did an interview with a boy who went out with his camp um, at Catalina Island and saw a bunch of UFOs, lots of them. I don't know if you've heard of that lecture where um, they would come and they would get really close and then they would leave and it would be a different kind of UFO. Get really close and then leave. And this happened all night for him. He was young and he had other camp people with him that experienced the whole thing. One day you should ask Preston about that. Yeah. It's an amazing story, just amazing. That's like a show and tell of UFOs. Yeah, a <laughs> lot of different UFOs, all different kinds. Oh, and so. it may wonder why did they do that, you know? Why? I, and it was a young kid. You sent me a really nice uh, drawing of a gray. What's the story with that? Um, the gray ET was a, is a basic um, ET figure that um, the description has been given to me many, many times by many different contactees. But my own personal experience is when I went out with my girlfriend uh, to look for UFOs, um, we used to drive in our car and then she would direct us where she felt that they were there or they were trying to take her there. We ended up driving off the freeway. I think it was the I-5 near um god i'm trying to remember i can't remember it was out in the hills somewhere the mountains near pyramid lake and uh we drove off and we saw a beautiful shooting star and it was quite large and it moved very slow across the horizon of the sky it was like sunset and it was golden and there was these sparkles coming off of it. So we definitely went out towards that area and parked. When we parked, um, we were just sitting around for probably a couple of hours as the night started to get darker and darker and the stars came out. Bushes started moving around us. And she said, they're here, they're here. And I, saw one bush to the right of me move. I saw another bush to the left of me move. And my son was with me. He was young. He was probably about 11 or 12. All of a sudden, I felt something pushing on my solar plexus. And I looked down and I saw like this head. It wasn't quite in a physical space. It was sort of phasing in and out and it was a little gray e alien pushing at my solar plexus oh, it was very strange and then they went away and everything went quiet and that was it it was probably about one or two o'clock in the morning so was he like pushing you with his hands and looking up at you i he was pushing me with energy um I think there's something about the solar plexus. I'm not sure uh, somebody was telling me about the solar plexus, how it's an energetic point. Like this is where your silver cord comes through with your, when you astral plane and stuff. It's an interesting place. Maybe he was connecting to me on an astral level and then trying to come through physically. Okay. Oh, that's wow. Yeah, that's my intuitive intuitively yeah okay. but they were definitely there mm. <laughs> moving the bushes around and stuff yeah. and walking around, yeah. all invisible in their invisible cloak or something i don't know <laughs> let's talk about the john wilkie uh photo um john wilkie came to preston and i to show us how to see ufos um we would look, go outside, we'd wear dark glasses that were solar protected. We would look up at an overhang of a ceiling or a roof at the sun. And 
you don't look directly at the sun, you only look at the um, corona of the sun. John said that UFOs can't hide in the corona of the sun. They'll always make themselves invisible, but you can always see them in the corona. It's very important to make sure that you're not looking at bugs because bugs look exactly the same as a UFO. Um, what really sold me that it was a UFO at that day when I was with him is that they moved slowly and in a uniform way in a triangular pattern. There was three of them and then they moved apart. And um, I did see six of them come through and they would come through and then stop and then move in these different formations and then leave. I'm fairly certain it was connected to him. He was the one calling them in and having us view them. Wow. Yeah, I think Preston saw them a couple of times without John. So they came to him and I saw them on a separate occasion, probably once after that. Yeah, soon yeah. after. So See, they, you know, they wanted us to know, okay, here we are. And this is what it looks like. So how do you feel about that? It, being able to see UFOs and, uh, and ghosts and ETs? I think it's cool. I, I just think the world is, is so amazing. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's, it's not just this basic place where you work nine to five and eat and drink and go to sleep. It's, yeah. There's so much more, so much more. I tend to <laughs> view this as a, like a, we're in the Harry Potter world, you know, the wizarding world. And you've got uh -huh. the, you know, the, the, the non-magical folk and you've got the magical folks. And so we're, li <laughs> we're living like a dual life sort of. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> you do have to do your normal nine to five and then you go to these, these conventions and when that's when you're with your people and you know, you know, everybody's happy and uh oh and, truly. Uh, oh truly. And um after meditating on people's photographs, I mean I meditate for people all over the world. It made me realize that everybody, everybody is so special and um there's so much that we're all connected to and and we're not separate you know it, it's just it's amazing to me that some people don't know that and it, it's unfortunate but um it's also important to recognize when you have a mental illness too and stuff like that and i've, I've met a lot of people like that too you know um it's good to know what's real you know, and, and the infinite world will show you what's real. Um, the mind sometimes has trouble um, translating it. But once you learn in your life how to do that and uh, stick with that, then you'll be a healthy mind that explores the unlimited possibilities of, of life you know <laughs> i guess you do at least for me um uh the, i didn't have a like the fear of death would go away because of that i know there's yeah. something uh so that really changed my life i'm really happy because of it and uh i think i'm a better person too because before that i was more ego oriented uh no, uh -huh. I was at the pubs. I used to be really like, I used to be a, like a bodybuilder back in the day. And uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, everything changed after that. Uh, before yeah. we finish, let's talk about the, the Marco, the two Marco photos uh, that you sent me. Um, my husband, um, he was in high school and he saw with his two friends, UFO flying around uh, Reseda in California. And, um, so he got 
he was in his VW van and they started chasing the UFO, driving after it. They drove a couple of blocks and the UFO was just flying along. They knew he was watching them <laughs> and following them. And it was this beautiful U-shape um, string of lights that was red, green, red, green, red, green that would alternate uh, flashings. And um, he stopped at a red light and this other car stopped next to him. And they said, hey, do you see that? That's a UFO. And then all of a sudden what it did was it, it was in a U shape and it turned upside down and it completely freaked everybody out except for my husband, of course, he's pretty wild. And uh, <laughs> the, the car went, I'm getting out of here. And they drove away. And my husband just kept following it. And his friend, he had to stop because his friend just couldn't handle it. He just couldn't handle it anymore. And uh, years after uh, I was this experience, and we got married and I was just sitting next to him in the, on the couch. I felt something in his elbow and it was this rod inside his elbow. And it wasn't a bone chip, it was a perfect rod. It must have been about an in, a half an inch long and uh, probably a couple of centimeters wide. And we later, years later, had it um, x-rayed by an x-ray friend and it was organic. And I've heard from also my girlfriend, who's a contactee, her implants were organic. She actually dug one out of her skin and pulled it out and looked at it. And, and the funny thing is, is there was this one guy who used to get everybody's implants. I forget his name. He would never give them back. They say, where's my implant? And they, he said, oh, well, I'm keeping them. Or, or I lost them or something like that. I think the government has them. Okay. <laughs> oh. But my husband's implant now is almost gone. Really? Yeah, it completely, it's slowly disappearing. So, wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so your husband had other experiences like that? Like? Uh... Not awake, but he's had vivid dreams about ETs and he would rush and save children and things like that. They didn't really like him. He's too aggressive. <laughs> okay. Hmm. It's like this powerful Aries being <laughs> full of energy. so, but really happy and sweet. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, he has yeah. to. <laughs> like those cup of coffee people <laughs> used to work in the movie business. God bless him. <laughs> so if people want to get into contact with you, can they do that through your website? Yeah, I have a contact um, section where they can write to me. I'm not taking orders until 2022 because I'm working on a, another project with a museum curator. But after that, yeah, I can take some orders. I get, I get booked way ahead of time. Um, lots of bookings. And uh, so there's a big long wait list once I start booking. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I wish other people did what I did. So, you know, get like an apprentice or something. <laughs> I don't know. I tried to get my daughter. She's like, oh, scary. She's had experiences too. Oh. <laughs> no, I want to do that. Oh. But, um, yeah, but yeah. You're, you're one and only. You're the only one. You're unique. And that's what makes you special too. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> you're like, very special also. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on tonight. I know you're really busy. So thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate it too. Thank you. I really appreciate you were the fact that you were smiling the entire time. That's, that's really <laughs> Well, it's fun, you know, yeah. life, it's neat. Yeah. It's like Star Trek, that one planet where anything can happen. If you think about it, <laughs> it's like that place. Oh. Neat. <laughs> Well, to those watching tonight's episode, hope you guys enjoyed it. I had loads of fun. Um, more interviews coming up and I'll see you guys next time. So take care, everyone.
Okay, bye. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Gray and thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee or experiencer and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomenon and the future, remember, truth will out.